Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. In this Warcraft Rumble dungeon guide, I'm going to take a look at Nomergan on a Horde week, and specifically this Cairn Bloodhoo farm that I used for clearing a red dungeon at 1.9 levels below the dungeon level. First, let's take a quick look at the Nomergan dungeon mechanics. The first boss, Crowd Pummeler, Malayan Cannon Attacks and Knock Player minis off the platform, and yeah, they do. However, flying minis, when they get knocked off the platform, they can just fly back. When ground minis get knocked off the platform, even in some of these gaps, they're just gone. So the main plan for this one is to take this meeting stone and then start attacking it from both sides. With ranged units, Chimera I suppose is the best one. Chimera can just do so many things and it can also recover from being knocked back, but any ranged units really can handle it if you send them from both sides so that the boss can't knock them all down quickly enough. Then there's also these protective devices, Gnomish Harm Prevention Belt, Limited Time Protection, known to attract gnomes if left sitting too long. So these give the minis temporary shield, but also if they're here for a while, then a safe pilot will spawn and from the boss's side and grab them and then start attacking you. So you want to pick these up when you have time to do that, but the main thing is to get this stone and get these attacks from two sides going. The second boss, Electrocution 6000, is the most annoying and most difficult boss in all of the dungeons in this game. Because you're just going to be swarmed by so many minis. It has rocket towers, so you can't outrange rocket towers. And these rocket towers also have this kind of mist around them that deals elemental damage to your minis. The boss itself deals a whole bunch of elemental damage, so you would kind of want to tank it with something resistant. Even a quill bore will do. But also fire elemental used to be pretty sweet when it could also tank the rocket towers, but nowadays it doesn't do that nearly as effectively. So you need something to take the rocket towers. Sappers with rocket boots is the best option. If they don't have rocket boots, then at least one of the sappers is going to die, because slow sappers just are not fast enough to get underneath of the rocket. But rocket boot sappers, even if they're one-on-one -on -one against the tower, they will be able to hit the tower. Gargoyle is another fine one. It's also armored, so it does a pretty good job here. If you don't have rocket boots on your sappers, you probably want to use a gargoyle. Then some kind of resistant armored something tank could also also potentially handle them, but that's more difficult now that there's both damage types in. And once you get both towers, you really have to get some towers here, then you want to attack the boss and use a resistant tank to turn the boss around and then get some then get some damage on it from behind. For example, Chimera can be very strong, but resistant tanks are the key to getting to the boss. And if you win the second map, you have basically won the dungeon, because making a thermal block is not much of a boss. Control switches summon walking bones for big damage. Thermal block has this shield here, so thermal block takes very little damage otherwise, but there will be walking bombs coming over here, or coming over here, depending on who is going to break through these switches. Switches cannot be claimed by flying, so you can claim them with ground troops, and you can claim them with spells. You're just trying to keep minis on both sides of the map at all times, so that whenever they spawn there, you get to destroy them immediately. So just go back and forth and back and forth, and always send miners whenever possible, because there's plenty of gold here to mine, and it's all very close to your base, and yeah, Thermoblock is just a game of whack-a-mole, basically, and then that's Nomergon. This is my current gear army for Nomergon. I'm using Goblin Sappers, Witch Doctor, Pyromancer, Footman, Plague Farmer, and Frostwolf Shaman. So for the first boss, Plague Farmer is the key mini there. Plague Farmer can shoot at the first boss without the first boss reacting. You take the stone and you just send Plague Farmers. I like sending Plague Farmers from down below and other minis from up. So then Plague Farmer gets a little bit more time typically on it, but just ranged minis and boom, boom, boom. And that's pretty much going to do it. Then on the second boss, I have the Goblin Sappers here, and Sappers are good at taking towers. Goblin Sappers are not quite enough at taking towers once they're a couple of levels below, so then you will need some extra damage from somewhere. And the way I do it with this one is that I use the footmen with a split push, so that some footmen are going through the middle, some footmen are going through the tower, and then I can also try to send something like Plague Farmers through the middle on the side where I want them to shoot at, so that they can shoot at the tower from the from the middle ramp if an opportunity presents itself. So there's quite a few ways that I can try to make this work. And then the final boss is just a whack a mole, so that's always super easy. Footmen in this one, footmen are just split push galore because you split push on the first map, you split push on the second map, you split push on the third map. Just splitting your footmen is really, really good in this one. 
Overall, Nomergarden is a really difficult dungeon. The second boss is the most difficult dungeon fight, and it has now been buffed already three times. Yeah, Blizzard just keeps buffing it indirectly, of course, because typically you used like Welbex and Quilbor here, and now both of those have been nerfed. Quilbor can still be used. Welbex can sort of still be used, but they just do only half of what they used to do. So, trying to come up with ways to ways to mitigate that and still beat the map. And this is what it all looks like in action. And here we call Nomergan with Cairn, starting with the Pummeler. So typically I like to send some minis to take the stone and something to handle the chest and maybe maybe the chickens. Now that I have the footman here, I'm trying to split push with the footman, but splitting against those chickens, well, chickens managed to get managed to get the shield and a little bit fast, so it's not going as well as it could. Also, a safe pilot dropped right on top of my minis, so uncharacteristically, I'm not able to take the stone here with the first assault immediately. Typically, I would get that stone. So maybe I could have tried something like the cairn there and not use the footman yet and just put a ranged me up left. Something like that could have been possible. But either way, this boss, when you have a good army, this boss is not super challenging. You should be able to do this the vast majority of time. It's going to be the second boss that's going to be more difficult. So if, even though I engaged in quite a fight for this stone, as you can see, eventually I was able to grab the stone, and now we're getting some sense of normalcy into this, except that I, now that I'm late, then the miner got the shield, and yeah. Well, it's still fine, it's still fine. It's going to all work out, I believe. I'm a believer. All right. Here we go, Plague Farmer, two levels lower than the chickens, just enough to still kill the full set of chickens. And I'm sending some cairns out there to help me tank. Plague Farmer starts to chip in some damage, but now there's a Griffin Rider. I hope that my I hoped that my Pyromancer would have been able to grab the shield, but it was a little bit too late. So so far I've been just a little bit off with my timings. I've been constantly a tiny bit too late here. But this, with this boss, there's plenty of time. My base is not under any major threats. As long as I can hold on to the stone, and I will be able to send plague farmers from bottom and other minis from left, then this should all be perfectly fine. So now we're sending out some footmen again, and we have a pyromancer supporting the footmen push on the top. And then I would want to get some... Well, now that there were chickens, I needed to send some AOE units so that the footman can handle it faster. So then I'm actually sending the, I'm actually sending the plague farmer the opposite way compared to usual. But it's okay. It's just that push from both sides. As you can see now, we have ranged DPS that is able to shoot at the boss. Boss has to do walking back and forth, and that means that boss is going to take a bunch of damage. If you had flying units, you might be able to do this a little bit easier. But these are generally stronger in the more challenging bosses later. And speaking of more challenging bosses, here's the Electrocutioner, the most challenging dungeon boss of them all. And here, with this hand, I want to start out slow. I don't have a really good offense anywhere. The AI is pushing through the middle, so I want to defend the middle, but I don't want my defense to go so deep that it would be hit by the rocket towers, because these defenders are killed rapidly if they're hit by the rocket towers and by the minis. But now I have Cairn in the middle, I was able to contest the push, and now I can send the sappers plus a little bit of DPS to take a tower. And boom, now we have one tower taken. There should be nothing coming right now to contest it. But one of the big things here is that sometimes you end up taking a tower down, but then it's attacked before it actually is built for you, and then you might just end up losing it again. So try to avoid getting into positions like that. So now, all right, this looks quite okay. We have some push going through the middle. Going through the middle is very important also to contest those gold chests. And I was able to actually contest that gold chest even though I didn't have control of both towers yet. And I'm making use of both Cairn and the footman. Shaman can heal the footman. Footman are obviously already armored, but Shaman can also make Cairn armored. So then Cairn is just a really, really good tank here. One of the beefier, beefier horde leaders, making it a really good one to tank. You could use the same arm with all the other horde leaders as well. 
but especially Sneed tends to be a little bit fragile. Sneed's already armored, so Sneed doesn't get any further benefit from the Shaman, and it can be a little bit more difficult if you try to use Sneed as a tank. So here I'm using the distraction through the middle, and that allows me to send DPS minis to take the tower. I didn't even use the sappers this time. Now that we have done that, we're going to try to get a lot of stuff going. We have footmen, we have cairn. So we have tanks coming from two lanes, and I'm trying to send DPS down the third lane. So as you can see, I'm putting plague farmer there. I'm putting the pyromancer there. So now just trying to keep the keep the boss occupied. I don't even have those resistant tanks this time. Just a lot of tanks and some healing. And keeping the boss occupied, getting DPS in, and this time it's enough and we actually win. And finally there's making a Therma block, which is more of a formality. So here we go. Footmen are split pushing, which means that I get to push from both sides with them. I probably actually should start sending them from behind my base instead of from the front of my base. They go a little bit too, too far into the inner side when I sent that way. So. That would be an improvement that I could do, I didn't realize to do it here, so instead of positioning them at the front of the base, trying to position them behind the base might be worth it. Be that as it may, we have a pretty bad start here. Well, footmen are quite slow and I didn't manage to contest many of the early, early switches, but now I'm getting to a stable position. I have this stream of minis coming from both sides. Sometimes I try to position them also quite far into the deployment zone so that it will take them longer time to get forward so that I will just have minis steady on the board. And now there's way too many switches there. Yeah, positioning those footmen at the back of the base instead of at the front of the base might be, might be just the improvement that I would need for this. But then again, this one, if you can get through the second boss, you will most likely get through this unless you are running a team that has like a ton of flyers or something. Because that second boss is just so much more difficult. So we haven't seen a fully optimized army from Mechanair because, well, any army that can get through the second boss is going to get through this one too. I have sometimes lost an individual attempt, but you always have at least two, so... There should be nothing to worry about. And as you can see, the tide has already turned. It took me a while to get my get my groove going because my footmen were really slow. But now I have had the presence on both sides and the results are starting to be seen. Mechino Thermal Pluck is falling behind a lot. And yeah, it's just going, going smoothly now. Okay, Kira's almost dead. We can, we can send some footmen, but I'm actually not sure if those are even needed, and they are not. And that's no Morgan with Horde. Thank you for watching. Click like and subscribe if you enjoyed this, and a special thanks to all of my Patreon supporters, YouTube members, and Twitch subscribers who make all of these videos possible.